All right. And we're almost there. It says meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. There you go. All right. Can you get, we need Ada. Oh. We are now streaming. That's what that means. Good morning, Stanton Reformed <laughs> Church and friends. Good to see everyone's faces. A uh, couple things from last week. If you're not seeing every, it's a couple of things. Make sure that you're muted. Oh, we are until now it's your time. That's what that means. Good morning, speak. Stanton Reformed Church and oh, friends. This is what happens. Good to see everyone's faces. A uh, couple things from last week. If you're not seeing every, it's a couple. There's a little things. bit of a delay. I forgot. Muted. So good morning, everybody. So make sure you're muted. And if you want to see everybody up on your right hand, upper right hand corner, there's an option of what you, your viewing options. And if you click to gallery view, you just get to see everybody. And we look like um, the old, the old Muppet show, right? It's time to play the music. Is that how it was at the opening line? Anyway. All right. So a uh, couple announcements. If you can believe it, this Wednesday is the first day of Lent. And so uh, starting next Sunday, we are doing a, an interesting worship series called Baking with the Bible. And you got your first uh, hint about it in the, uh, in the email that went out this week from the church office. If you are a baker, I would love your help. Uh, we're going to, several of us who do enjoy baking are going to bake uh, double or triple our recipes so that everyone can enjoy the same bread. And that means if you're not a baker, you can put your order in and pick up bread on Saturday. Um, we're not having communion with the bread. We're just enjoying a different kind of bread every week. And the bread that we're baking coincides with the scripture story, if you can believe it. And so um, there's information about that in your bulletin and take a look. So if you want to bake, let me know. If you want to order bread, um, let the church office know or me, but it'll be fun. That starts on Sunday. To get us going this Ash Wednesday, you can take a look at our vid our YouTube channel. Um, we'll probably send out an email too with just a little video of sourdough being made. So it gets us, I don't know, primed and ready for thinking about making bread, something to get us going. Um, Carol has been sending out from the church office a sign-up list for liturgists and acolytes. So please sign up. We've been calling people, but it'd be great for us you to let us know when you'll be here and when you could read um, the more the merrier, which is what's great about Zoom. We can all participate and it's so much easier this way. Those are the announcements I have. Take a breath. Here we are on this Sunday morning in snowy Hunterdon County. I'm going to invite, uh, before Philip starts playing, I'm going to invite the Salvatore family to light a candle for us. Then you have to find, oh, they're, they're waving. They're waving. Can you see them? There they are. And they're going to light our candle as we start worship.
Morning again. So this is an intentional intergenerational service today. So everyone can play. Uh, it is meant uh, to include kids or to worship in a way that would make sense for children, since most of the time we worship in a way that makes sense for adults uh, and kids have to adjust. And so I invite you and perhaps even challenge you adults to worship like a kid today. So our call to worship is going to be a scavenger hunt, things that are in your house and you're going to have to go find them for me and bring them back and show me. Okay. You ready? A flashlight. Go get it. I already have mine. <laughs> I need to see the gallery view. Oh. Penny got hers already. That was fast. Ah, Beryl's got one. Oh, Kate. Look at you guys running. Oh, is that Michelle? You have your hair up. Hi. <laughs> it's so much easier when you all sit in your place in the sanctuary. And then I know who I'm talking to. You in your row back there. All right, next thing. Ready? I know this is going to go fast. You're going to have to. A backpack. <laughs> Michelle is literally running around the house looking for a backpack. <laughs> oh, Lita. Lita is literally in the weeds. Do you see her coming on? That's adorable. Backpack, William. I see your backpack. I see them. I see them, Donna Herb. Fantastic. Next thing, shoes that are good for hiking. Shoes that are good for hiking. Go get them. Go get them. Go get them. Philip just said to me that he doesn't have any hiking shoes. Aren't you from Hunterdon County too? <laughs> and you go hiking, don't you? No, you're a runner. Ah, barrel. Michelle White is like totally nice. I see Scott. Scott's got his, the Salvadors. You are, you guys are awesome. I see. Ah, look at that. The Savard family is there too. All right. Clean socks. <laughs> you know, I'm saying it right when Michelle sits down. That's. <laughs> You got clean socks, Lita? Clean socks? <laughs> That's fantastic. Lita is literally like in the weeds. Ants are bigger than her. Nice going, William. Nice going. Okay, next. Your favorite pillow. Go. Go get it. Go get it. Favorite pillow. Tanya's got her hiking boots. Fantastic. Oh, look at that. Penny, what kind of pillow is that? Penny's got an owl pillow. Nice, nice. Oh, there you go. Virginia Tech in the house. Nice, good job. All right, bug spray. Bug spray. It's under snow underneath some table on your patio. That's where my bug spray is. <laughs> so telling about the pastor. Bug spray, bug spray. Oh, Kate's got it. Oh, William's got it. Bug spray. Oh, Raid. Penny is serious, serious, serious this morning. Sunglasses, sunglasses. Go get them, sunglasses. <laughs> Philip, Philip's in the house with his sunglasses. <laughs> nice, very nice. All right, Penny's got hers. <laughs> of course, Beryl. Kate is always prepared. There's Diane's dog. Cassie, right? Last thing, ready? Last thing on the scavenger hunt, a water bottle. Supposed to teach this song with hand motions, huh? Things I say I will do on Wednesday. Nice. 
Nice. There you go. Tanya's got her glasses on. And <laughs> she's serious too. Nice. Uh, Scott, Scott looking like a top gun firefighter. <laughs> nice. William taking after the dad. That's fantastic. I told my dad. You did fantastic. If you can imagine that all actually really does go with the sermon and the text that we're going to read. And so thank you for playing our scavenger hunt for gathering not only ourselves, but all of our stuff to worship today. So I'm going to teach you a song. Also kid friendly. Ow. And it has hand motions. And so if you know it, you have to, can you still hear? I hope you can still hear me. I'll just get louder. It's rise and shine. You guys know that. Sometimes it's called the Arky Arky song, but we're not doing the verses because that's out of control. Okay, so uh, can you give me a, like a G chord maybe? Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Let me do that again. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Can you do it again? Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. The claps are probably really loud. Well, try it. Okay. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. One more time so we get it, okay? Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Well done, everybody. Have a seat if you're standing. And I'm going to invite Delia and Ada to read us, to um, lead us in prayer. Let's turn our attention to God in prayer. Okay. Okay. Nope, yep, go ahead, Go ahead, um, are you the one, the one with the questions, the one with the doubts, the one with the fears, the one with the anger? Are you the one, the one who's certain, the one with your faith intact, the one with it sorted, the one full of joy? Are you the one, whoever you are, let us join our voices to God in prayer. Creator, open our eyes that we might see. Open our eyes to our hearts. So, um, may we see your compassion that created us, your imagination that bound us together, your justice that shaped our future, your word that calls us to be, your healing that recreates each day, your forgiveness that transforms who we shall be, your spirit that redefines who we are, your hope that never lets us go. May we see you as you are and know you for what you are becoming. Just as you have created us and loved us, continue to transform us. People of God, what does the Lord require of us? But to justice, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to love humbly with our God. God loves us, Christ guards us, the Holy Spirit lives within us. As God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you.
we're finishing up our dream catcher today. You can hear me. It's okay. Finishing up our dream catcher today. And so in the email, you got a picture to color. If you would like, it looks like that. It's a mountain with a big journey headed to it, a big walkway, right? And so you can go ahead and color that if you want. We're going to put that, if you want to cut it out, you can put it up in your dream catcher. That's our last one. So let's check out the dream catcher though. I mean, I know it's a little bit far away from my computer, but we started out with a dove because that's what happened when Jesus was baptized. A dove came down and it shows us the Holy Spirit was with him. And then we put a scroll for the word, the scripture that Jesus got to read that talked about what his dream was for the world. And then we put a fish because Jesus, Jesus's dream was that we would catch people and not just fish, that we would catch people in our love and in our hugs and our embraces. And then we put wheat because one day Jesus was eating wheat in a field and then he came across someone who couldn't do the same thing. And so he helped that person do the same thing. And last week, we put a whole bunch of people because Jesus interacted with a whole bunch of different kinds of people. And so that's fantastic. So today, we're going to hear a story about Jesus and his friends going up to a mountain. They're essentially taking a hike. Now, do you understand why we picked all those hiking things for our scavenger hunt? They're going on a big hike. So I'm going to read it but I'm gonna show you the picture. Can you see the picture? I don't know why I'm not on. Okay, all right. So there's Jesus's friends. And the, the guy in white is Jesus. And then we're gonna find out who these other two guys are, okay? I'll read the story to us, all right. Let's see. Um, Peter was glad when a few days later, Jesus asked him to go for a long walk. James and John came too. It felt good to have some time alone with Jesus. They walked until they came to a mountain. In many of the old stories, people climbed mountains to be close to God. It was on a mountain that God spoke to Moses and whispered to Elijah, <gasps> I think that's our hint of who those guys are. Peter wondered if this was why Jesus was leading them up the mountain. Would God speak to them, show them the way? Would there be smoke and fire or angels or voices? Peter did not know what to expect, but he felt sure something amazing was going to happen. When they reached the top of the mountain, something amazing did happen. Peter, James, and John could hardly believe their eyes. Two figures appeared out of nowhere and began to talk with Jesus in low murmurs. It was Moses and Elijah. Then Jesus began to glow with light. See how he's kind of glowy? The light of creation, the light that no darkness can put out. This was what Peter had been waiting for. How wonderful this is, he blurted out. Why don't I build some tents for all of us so we can stay here longer? Maybe Peter did not want to leave that glorious light and return to ordinary life with all its troubles. Or maybe he was remembering the story of how his ancestors escaped from slavery in Egypt and lived in tents in the desert and God took care of them. Suddenly a mist wrapped itself around Peter, James, and John. Peter could not see anything. He could hardly tell up from down. And then a voice spoke familiar words. The voice said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. When the fog cleared, Jesus was standing there alone, looking the way he always looked, perfectly ordinary. What just happened, Peter said. What did it mean? Peter said, Jesus, listen to me. You call me the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, the one you have all been waiting for me, waiting for. You call me the son of the living God. And you think you know what this means. You think it means power and glory and crowns and thrones, but you're wrong. I'm here to do the work of God. And when has that ever been safe? 
Peter was very quiet. Do you still want to follow me? Asked Jesus. Peter thought about this. Will you stay with me? Peter asked. Always, said Jesus. So Peter followed Jesus back down the mountain. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> so again, with us trying to do something a little different today, I want us to not only hear the story from that children's book, but we're going to play a video, hopefully. Sarah's going to show her screen, and you'll, hear, you'll see another video of some kids telling you the story in their own words. Yep. It's okay. We can wait. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. This is it's okay. You have to change the microphone to the um no, it doesn't seem to like the um But do you listen when your parents tell you to take out the garbage? Okay, we're gonna start over the last time. <laughs> hey kids, do you listen when your little brother tells you to do something? Like maybe he told you to take out the garbage. Um, but of course you didn't listen. But do you listen when your parents tell you to take out the garbage? Hopefully you do, because you know they're in charge. Well, in today's lesson, we're going to see who God tells us to listen to. Jesus led Peter, James, and John up a high mountain to be alone. Jesus had 12 disciples that traveled around and taught with him, but these three guys were like his best friends. And what happened up there is called the Transfiguration, which was just a fancy way of saying that Jesus changed the way that he looked. Jesus' face and clothes turned bright like the sun. Whoa, that's pretty crazy, but it gets even crazy. Two guys from the Old Testament named Moses and Elijah appeared and started talking to Jesus. Those guys were really important leaders, and they had been dead for a really, really long time. Jesus' disciples were very excited to see them, and they wanted to make a shelter for them so they could stay. But then they disappeared, and then another crazy thing happened. 
the disciples heard a voice coming from the sky. The voice they heard was God the Father. And when they heard him, they fell to the ground and were terrified. God is so powerful, and they didn't even think they should be in his presence. And God didn't want them to be afraid, but he did want to get their attention. And here's what he said. Let me verse. This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. And here's what we can learn from this. When we understand who Jesus is, we will listen to him. The real reason for the transfiguration was to show Jesus' disciples who he really was. When the disciples saw this, you know they really listened to what Jesus had to say. Jesus is God himself. If that's not a guy that we're listening to, I don't know who it is. And when you see who Jesus is, that will make us want to listen to him, kids. So we should read our Bibles and see what he has to say to us. So kids, next time your parents get you to take out the trash, remember this lesson. Listen to your parents, but most importantly, listen to Jesus. Hey kids and parents, if you want to learn more about obedience <laughs> or God, check out the links below. <laughs> there you have it. So we're going to, again, doing something really different today. We're going to go into breakout rooms. And instead of me talking about what the scripture meant, we're going to let you guys talk with each other. And I have two really simple, simple questions. <clears throat> uh, say hi to one another. Do that first, right? And then the question really is, if you were on a mountain with Jesus, what would you want to talk to him about? If you were on a mountain with Jesus... What would you want to talk to him about? You get seven minutes. If you've never done this, you're going to get a screen that says, would you like to go to a breakout room? If you say yes, you'll go right away. If you don't say anything, you'll just go. It'll be like beaming up from Star Trek.
We're back. We're all back. Look at that. I think we are. So if you're still coming back, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that was fun. It was fun in our group, right? A little intergenerational conversation, totally different ideas of what we might want to talk to God about or Jesus when we were on top of a mountain. So I hope you had fun. Um, if you were on a mountain, right? Like I said, I bet we all have very different ideas of what to talk about. What's so interesting to me about this story, at least this year, right? Every year it might seem different, is that whatever they were talking about on the mountain, it, it could keep going on even when they got down the mountain, right? So if they started a conversation on top of a mountain, we can keep having the conversation as we walk down the mountain with Jesus, even though we would all love to spend time with Jesus, to spend time alone in prayer, which we do, right? All of us find time to pray, find some quiet time in our lives for our own thoughts. Those are kind of our mountain times where we get away from our life and try to listen to what God wants from us. But at some point we got to come down off the mountain, right? We've got to get off the couch or come off wherever it is that we're praying. And we have to remember that there was this great light, right? At least in the story, there was this great light on Jesus's face and on Moses and Elijah. And then they disappeared and the disciples were left with Jesus to walk down the mountain again. We all have places in our lives that bring us light, we need to go to those places now more than ever, I think. We need time to be in the presence of God, whether in prayer or with music. Sometimes that really works for me to play music that I love. Maybe spend time with scripture, maybe spend time in a good book that reminds us of uh, the thoughts that we want to have regularly. We need time to be in the presence of God. We need to find ways to experience light in our lives. And then we need time to take that light down the mountain. So may I suggest that sometime this week, you take up that conversation with Jesus, whatever it is you just shared with one another, start the conversation with Jesus. Now you don't have to do it on a mountaintop. You can do it anytime. You can start that conversation now. Amen. And so we will continue that conversation because God is with us in, you know, right here in our presence. What do we want to pray for one another? Here we are talking about how we want to talk to God. What do we want to say to God or what prayers, what joys and concerns do we have to share with one another? I'll start and pray for um, Darlene. Uh, Darlene Manchin asked for um, uh, new prayers for Dennis. There's a new infection in his leg. And so it might mean another uh, hospital visit. So if we could pray for them as they navigate what's next and how healing can happen. What other prayers do you have? Wave wildly and I will, um, I'll find you. Uh, we, this is Maggie, everybody. Hi. <laughs> we just wanted um, to pray for our daughter, Melanie, who um, broke her leg uh, last weekend in a sledding incident. And uh, she's in a full cast. And it's just a lot for her to process. She's handling it very, very well. Um, but just for healing and just to have a lot of happiness in the next few weeks for her. Yep. Pray for healing, for patience, patience, for easy access into and out of buildings. Yes. <laughs> Anything else we can pray for? Donna. Oh, Kate. And then Donna. My, uh, my colleague and friend from work, uh, had surgery on Friday. Uh, to remove a very large cyst from her abdomen. Um, everything went really well. I have text with her and um, she's in some pain, but very relieved that the surgery is over. So just prayers for a speedy recovery for her. Yep. Donna, what were you going to say? Um, uh, a prayer of thanks. My, my mom actually got four offers on her house already. Um, 
since we're selling the house. And so just, you know, prayers in it for guidance on, you know, which is the, the best one to take because you never know what can happen with stuff like that. Yep. We prayed for that last week. So we'll continue to pray that our house sells. Anything else? Well, I don't know how your groups went and what you talked about that you wanted to um, talk to Jesus about, but one of the things we talked about was how do we respond? What kind of, where, where are we in this process of this world? Where are we supposed to be? Where do we fit into this world and how do we shine our own light or give our own gifts? And so I want to pray that as a as a group of people from Stanton Reformed Church, that we are a light in our world um, and that when we see dark places, that we cultivate compassion and find ways to shine light. So take a deep breath. Let's offer some silence for the prayers that are still on our hearts and on our minds. And would you join me in prayer? Jesus, may you take us back to that first spark that lit our faith. May you take us back to that vision we had that connected us to your kingdom life. May you take us back to when we have known your love and grace. May you move forward into, may you move us forward into what is yet to be. Use the gifts we have and the longings for the kingdom. Light our way as we follow you. Amen. If you'd like, you can stand. If not, we're going to sing Be Thou My Vision together. Let's sing. In the video that we saw earlier with the kids telling us the story, they said the memory verse of the day was, this is my dearly beloved son, listen to him. This is my dearly beloved son, listen to him. Of all the things that we might want to talk to Jesus about, let's remember that we're talking so that he would tell us. And so might we be people who listen, that we listen to what Jesus has to say in our daily lives, in our public lives, in our work lives, in our school lives, in our church lives, in our family lives, that we listen to what Jesus has to say to us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and shine in you and shine through you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you. It's so nice to see everybody. So, so we are you. That's, so, what we're going to do next is we have breakout rooms for um, a few minutes. And I hadn't talked to Beth ahead of time, but what I'm going to do is Beth is going to go to all the rooms. So, I'm just going to start dropping her in rooms. So, if you want to go to your breakout rooms and visit, Beth will pop in and say hello. Does that work? All right. So click join when you get a room invitation. <laughs> 